Hi, this is Greg Johnson with Blue Book Services. I'm joined today by, with uh, Drew McDonald, who is Vice President of Quality and Food Safety at Taylor Fresh Foods. He's also on the Center for Produce Safety's Technical Committee. And today we're talking about the latest column from CPS, which kind of gets into how food safety can work into marketing. And Drew was mentioned in the, the most recent column. And Drew, you said some things about, about food safety and how it pertains to marketing. And, uh, and some of the audit systems that are out there, and it's much more than just checking box, boxes on an audit, it, it really should reflect the true food safety nature of a company. Because can you explain a little bit how that means at your company? Yeah, and I, I want to be careful. I mean, we're not necessarily saying we're marketing food safety. It's more we want to put the food safety questions out there. It's obviously front of mind for everybody. Um, you know we're we're dealing with a a major crisis right now in COVID, but understand that there, we still are recognizing uh, there's food safety opportunities. We all know about romaine. In fact, today I just had a question um, from USDA asking, "Is has the ban actually been lifted? <laughs> Was it all clear issued?" So th this this is still a, a very pertinent uh, topic. That there's a lot of work going on, uh, both behind the scenes and you know very, very much in the front of, of, of view. So it, it's not about marketing food safety, it's that uh, there's generalizations that happen, that there's a general sense that everybody is doing the same thing. And, you know, I've been fairly bold or, or outspoken. Um, audits have a role, the third party audits, second party audits, you know, front facing first person audits from a company standpoint. And, and of course the cliche is they're all a snapshot in time, but but that is actually being used to say there is an equal playing field. And if we have a, a wash system such as we use smart wash, and I will market that, but I'll market it from a food safety standpoint that it's validated as a, um, from, from a USDA standpoint to control cross contamination. It has multiple checkpoints. It has stops and starts. It, it's a very robust advanced system that we're using on all our leafy green produce items. And, we will score the same in that audit question, and I won't name audit firms, I'll just generally speak about them. We are, are subject to all, virtually every third party audit exists. We'll score the same as, as a firm that has a small, you know, dunk tank type wash system that has a, a tub of chlorine that's just dripping in there. Um, sometimes it's bleach. And is that an equal playing field? That It's not. And so, um, what I, the expression I've been using, because you don't want food safety to be a competitive advantage, but you don't want it to be a competitive disadvantage. So if one firm is doing these 10 things and another firm is doing two things, that's a competitive disadvantage for the firm that's really investing uh, resources and time in, into the food safety process. So that's what I'm, I'm talking about. It's hard to get it across in a, in a column. So I, 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 relish this opportunity to kind of talk in person. What are some ways that you can communicate to buyers that your company it really has a strong food safety culture? Yeah, one of the things I, I, I do want to emphasize, we, I do not think we're perfect. In fact, I think that's the very definition of, you know, when, when, when a buyer or if some, it comes out the question of, are you doing everything you can? The answer is no. We're not because we're always learning from our operation. So we're not perfect by any stretch, but we're doing some really cool things. And so when uh, any of these events occur, the Romaine uh, shutdown um, of last fall, the, the immediate reaction from, from kind of across the board is, okay, what can we do more? What are we doing? And, and it's asked kind of as a general question. My, my approach now or our approach at Taylor Farms is to not push back, but to say, hey, these are the 10 things we're doing. You should be asking others what they're doing. And so that's kind of the conversation. And I'll be honest, it's, 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 our buyers have been very receptive to it because we're all in this together, literally. I mean, it's the one great thing about food safety is we're all on the same page as far as we want to improve this. Now, not everyone's on the same page about how to do it. And so we're really trying to drive um, solutions from a data standpoint not emotional, we gotta get the emotional out of it. There's a lot of data out there, you know, CPS research, individual firms, FDA has information. 
you know, we're, we're trying to push for that. So the nice thing is everyone, you know, from the design standpoint, the supply standpoint, regulation, we all do want to solve this. The question is, is how and how do we drive change, you know, from a data driven solution standpoint? Yeah, Drew, that's a good point. You know, it's an ongoing process and a continuing learning situation. And this is a good, a very good example of that. Yeah, and here's another question. So what I've been trying to do is, is generate the questions I want to ask other suppliers and not from a competitive standpoint. Again, we're all in this together. When, when, when people are getting sick from Romaine, it's a horrible situation but it's not all the romaine that's getting people sick. And so what are the differences across the supply chain? And so what are those questions we can develop to, and the buyers have the, the biggest stick in this situation, more than regulatory. I mean, regulatory can shut it down. That doesn't fix it. Buyers can help drive the change. So what are the questions we can put in the hands of buyers to ask about these other firms? One, one very simple question I like is, what have you changed over the years? How does your program look today versus 10 years ago? If you're using the same, for example, wash systems, that's probably not a good sign. If, if you have the same environmental monitoring program for Listeria and it hasn't evolved, that's not a good thing. And, and unfortunately, a lot of the audits drive that complacency. And um, I, again, I believe there's a role for the audits and I think, they're listening and they, they want to do the right thing. It's just really hard to standardize that. It's ultimately up to individual operations to, to make their you know, programs as robust as possible. Yeah, those are good. I agree. All right, Drew, well, I'm going to let us uh, go today. And thank you so much for joining us and explaining some of what CPS is doing and trying to get across to the produce industry as a whole. So. Anytime, Greg. My pleasure. Thank you. Nice, nice speaking with you.